Just want to share a little bit about the Lady Eleanor. I didn't share very much uh, about this specific project. I made this back in 2010. It's folded so you can see it's quite a large project and one that I was quite pleased with and I'm still quite pleased with it. Uh, but I just wanted to share a few things about that and wonder if you're like me in this. Might we have this in common? When I'm going through a lot of change in my life, I like to make things that are very time consuming. And so the Lady Eleanor fit the bill for this. I made her back in 2010 and this is just a, a big time of transition for my family and uh, there were things that I was looking forward to in that change and then things that made me sad too. And so this project really helped me find comfort as we made that transition. And so I, I just wanted to share a little bit more about it. So every time it gets a little bit cold, I, I pull her out and I really enjoy wearing her. I've told a couple of my close friends, so this is episode three, so I'll share with you. I personally would never do this. Just, I don't have the guts, I guess, but not my style, not my taste for me personally. Um, <laughs> But remember on Greece when, uh, I can't think of her name now, the blonde, when she comes out and she's wearing the high heels and the tight leather pants and the tube t or tank top and everything, that's how I feel when I wear Lady Eleanor. Uh, she is kind of an attention getter and I'm us I usually have mixed emotions about attention. And here I am doing a video podcast. But there's a greater purpose behind it. But I just love the Lady Eleanor. And so if anybody is looking to make a project with Noro yarns, I highly recommend uh, the Lady Eleanor. But this specific video is all about the supported spindle. This will be a quick little video. And you can see there it's really... Fun. It almost kind of looks like a little teacup that spins. And then here's the very, very best part. Look at this cute little hedgehog. See how it says it's the little things. And again, if you stuck around for the end of the last video, and I was talking about Blue October, there's a line in one of the songs called Home. And Justin says it's the little things uh, to make a home. So, anyway, um, we've all heard it before, but you know, it just it's so much better coming from Blue October. So, again, this is my supported spindle. I could do it on my pants leg as well, but I just kind of want to show you. Ooh, got away from me. I put the twist in, and then I kind of hold it up at an angle. And as I do that, I can draft the fiber out. And then I give it another spin, draft it out a little bit more. Now there's some very skilled people out there that can continue to load the shaft with their spun, yarn, uh, spun wool and draft at the same time. I'm not quite there. As I said, this is something I'm somewhat new at, but I am enjoying it. So you give it a flick, and then you pull the wool out. And really, I know it's hard to tell exactly what's going on here. Because it's something that you really need to see up close. But again, I just kind of want to pique your interest. You, you might go on YouTube and just uh, look at spindle tutorials and see how other folks uh, are doing the same thing. So it's a park and draft method basically that I'm doing. 
And so you load it on, and this is a temporary cop right here. So that's, you just load it right here. And then once you have enough built up on your temporary cop, then you undo that. And then you wind on to the permanent cop. So you just do that by turning it in your hand and your fingers. So that loads it on. And then once it's full, you'll know it just gets not a drop spindle, but it dropped anyway. But you'll know when it's full. Then you have this cute little Christmas tree looking little thing. And I'll show you that. Here after me. No, I'll just put it down for now. I'll show you one. Here's one that I've done. So you can do it a couple of different ways. Uh, right now I have two that are in mason jars, keeping them separate so that they don't tangle because I think I have about the same yardage on both of them. But I have them in two separate mason jars and then I'm actually plying those two onto a different spindle and I'll show you that. Let me get it. Kind of looks like a tangled up hot mess right now, but you know, it is what it is. So there are the two different little cones in my mason jars. And I just have those sitting down at my feet. And then this is a beautiful spindle that I purchased from Butterfly Girl at the Texas Fiber Fest uh, this last spring. So what I'm doing is I'm plying those, oops, plying those two singles together. And so as that turns, it's creating the ply. If you're a spinner, you already know exactly what's going on here. But for those of you who this may be new to, this is one way to ply. A lot of people also like to just ply on their spinning wheel. But you don't have to have a spinning wheel to ply. So that's just one way. So again, this is a drop spindle. And then what I was showing you before with my little hedgehog is a supported spindle. So there's a couple of little options for you if you're not quite ready to make the investment in a spinning wheel. So hope this was helpful in some way. And again, thank you. Bye.